Oh, right, right. It's just until the legal Yes, right. Who knows? Nobody's checking. No. Well, like I said, yeah. Sean, Sean was. He did, and Sean said, no, 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 no. You don't, you don't do it that way. So. The yep. only reason I asked is I was thinking back to Massachusetts, and I'm like, yeah, this, this doesn't seem right because that's not, not what they used how they ran it there. Yeah, well, and I was just going by what I remember Finance. happening all the so, yeah. so. yeah. All right. Well, it looks like um, we're ready to go. It's 6.04. We do have a quorum. All of our new people have been sworn in now. Yep. yep. <laughs> Yay. Um, so tonight's meeting, um, we will be talking about the board reorganization and just sort of reorientation to um, our function and resources that we have. Um, and then we're going to be doing some policy uh, monitoring and reading. And we will have an executive session for an update on negotiations or yes okay so that will be happening we are in process with uh, the teachers union um, doing uh, trying to reach an agreement uh, so I am going to move on uh, to public comment um, and uh, before we get started, I'm going to read through the preamble on public comment. So the board welcomes comments, but it is not able to take any action on them other than to direct the public to the appropriate staff member or to the complaint procedure. Comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Time may not be ceded to another speaker. Comments are to be addressed to me, the board chair, or the board as a whole, not to any individual on the board, on the staff, or in the public. Please raise your hand and wait to speak until you are asked to by me. Please identify yourself with your first and last name in your town of residence. Please refrain from restating comments that have already been shared. You can express agreement with those comments. Order and decorum shall be observed by everyone. Shouting and profanity are prohibited. As the board chair, I will maintain the order and decorum of the meeting. So, I'm going to open it up now for public comment. We have... Uh, members of the public online. Uh, do either of you want to make a comment to the board? Seeing none, I will move on to the next. Oh, uh, actually, before we move, uh, well, We'll move on to the next uh, item, and there's one other thing um, I would like to um, add an agenda item, um, and that is to uh, review the March 8th uh, meeting for takeaways for the future in terms of learning, because it didn't go quite as we had wanted it to. And secondly, to vote to ratify the March 8th, me March 8th meeting um, so that it is uh, official due to the lack of quorum from the last from when we met. So we're going to add that um, to the agenda. And do we have we have a new person? So we. Uh, to move that. Yeah. Oh, I move oh, to I add to that to the agenda. Thank you. I have that. a second. Seconded by Sarah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And Nick is our recommended candidate for the RTCC position. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, is that under the agenda now? Yes, the, the review of March 8th. Oh, I was going to do that after the reorg stuff. Thank you. That's where I was going to put it. Um, so, uh, okay, uh, so we're going to move forward then to um, the report on the town meeting. Um, and I was going to ask Linda to just report out on that. I'm not sure what you want me to say, but uh, all our board, you know, our board members that were up for re-election got re-elected. I have the voting results in your packet. Okay. I think that right, covers that it. That meeting was pretty cool. And, and you were up very <laughs> late that night. Yes. So yeah. we got to get you some help. Well, they're doing like 12.30, yeah. but uh, yeah. we'll rethink the count next year because we couldn't use the tabulator until like 8.30. We were all here shortly after 7. Okay. So, but I found out Braintree has one, so, and they do all four votes, so maybe we'll just use their tabulator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. okay. So we'll, we'll do do the do the justices of, of the peace or the the election volunteers? Do they help you at all? Or yeah, actually, um, Brookfield they have to send two people down, and they have to be either well, it was the assistant town clerk that came, um, the present one that night, and then one of her helpers came, mm -hmm. and then uh, two from Ranger came. One was the select board or select board chair yeah. from Ranger, and Jesse the town clerk. So they had to deliver the ballots. We have to call me call and then we start counting. Okay. But the tabulator and did was, Randolph have some people to help you too? Yeah, a yeah. little bit, yeah. Actually, my brain tree crew stayed with me. I was very proud of them. They stayed to the bitter end. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. And one Randolph guy was actually my neighbor down the road. They were, they were disturbed. I think they were disturbed that there was not yeah. counting. So yeah. Right, so right. Counting. So we're gonna we're gonna review that for next year because I don't know what the process and procedures are, but if we can get a couple other people that have to be sworn in or whatever it is they Yeah, need. I mean it just well, this, the they have a different machine there and it's very slow. I mean it the reason it's slow, they said, is because it picks up more on the ballot. So yeah. And Braintree doesn't use their tabulator on no, on these operators. Yeah. Like Randolph's on the balance. Randolph's using it separate. Mm -hmm. Randolph's voting for other things. Right, they did. That's why I was not to wait until they were down. Yeah, they have their town, but they have their print out. So, so if you use Braintree's tabulator, you wouldn't have to. That's what I'm thinking. I didn't even know they had to until that. We could round one if we had to. Yeah, we'll, we'll work it out. Okay. It doesn't seem like we should, like, there are people on the board, but it doesn't seem like we should be counting. No. Because there are. No, no it yeah. should there are, be. There are interests. Right, so probably like election right. officials. No, I mean, yeah. yeah. I think she's right. I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, That's about all I have to say. Awesome. Well, thank you for yes. spending all that time and, and getting that all uh, tabulated for us. Um, so next up, we have the reorganization of the board, and that means we need to be um, voting uh, the chair, the vice chair, the committees, um, and so we're going to go ahead and start that. Hopefully everyone, I, and I apologize, I didn't send that email out until a little bit later. Um, there was some information that Lane got for us just in terms of if there are multiple uh, people interested in, in the different positions, sort of how to um, go about uh, doing that. So um, whoever is nominated first goes first, and if they don't get enough, then we go on to the second person nominated, and then so on and so forth. So. Um, and Chelsea is here. And Chelsea is here. Yay, Chelsea. <laughs> Where are you in North Carolina, Kentucky? Where are you? Oh, can she talk? Can you hear us? Hi. Yes, I am in North Carolina with Annabelle. Um, I just got in the door 
a hotel and the Wi-Fi is not working, so I just did it connected on my phone. So I think I'm good. Awesome. All right. Thank you for doing that. Okay. So, um, and uh, thank you, Lane, for for doing all that research with the, our our district council and make sure we know how to um, go about doing these things. So. Anyway, so first up, we have, um, we need to elect the chair. So do we have a nomination for chair? I nominate Andy. Do we have a second for that? Oh, we don't have to second that? I'm not sure if we need to second that or not. Um, do we have any other nominations? I am going to nominate Hannah Arias. Okay. Do we, and we don't need to do a second? Okay. Do we have any other nominations? Okay. So we're going to start with the vote. I think we did move. I moved. I think we moved to close nominations okay. for the for the chair. Okay. I'll second. I'll second that. I'm just remembering the town You're meeting. Second that. Um, okay. So, all those in favor of closing <coughs> nominations? Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. So. First up would be um, the first nominee, so that would be uh, Ann Kaplan for chair. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say nay. 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 Okay, so next up would be Hannah Arias. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. nay. Okay, so I'll turn the meeting over to Hannah. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, okay, time to elect, move on, and elect a vice chair. Do I have I, uh, open nominations? Do I have any nominations for us? I nominate Chelsea. Thank you. Don't need a second. Are there any other nominations? I nominate Megan. Thank you. Anyone else have a nomination for vice chair? Excellent. Does, uh, can I get a motion to close nominations for vice chair? I move to close nominations. Can I get a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, who was uh, nominated first? That was Chelsea. Chelsea. Okay, all those in favor of uh, electing Chelsea as vice chair? Aye. 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 All those opposed? So let me count here. One, two, three, four, five. Chelsea. Chelsea. Can she? Yeah. Does she need to accept the nomination? Does she need to accept the nomination? We're all voting for her, but she didn't say anything. As long as she doesn't abstain. Oh, you gotta turn your, turn your mic on. There you go. <laughs> okay, I accept the nomination for vice chair. Okay, so moving on with the vote, can you raise your hands again? She already has a majority. Have a majority. Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah, majority. All right. Chelsea, congratulations. You are now vice chair. <laughs> um, which means you're no longer clerk. May I uh, have any nominations for clerk? I nominate Rachel. Nope. <laughs> Thank you. Nomination <laughs> rejected. <laughs> I nominate Megan. What, what does this entail again? I can't remember. The minutes during executive session. Um, minutes during executive session. Or after, the, like before and after. When it's turned over, when Linda leaves. Or, or if Linda is out. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, can I say now? <laughs> <laughs> Nomination rejected again. 
do I have any other nominations? Let me rephrase. I do I have any volunteers? <laughs> oh, no. I, I reject that one. <laughs> I nominate Katja. Nope. <laughs> What's that? I'll nominate Sam. Uh, I may I have a motion to close nominations, please. So moved. A second. As Sam moved by Megan. Seconded. Okay, all those in favor of Sam. As clerk, Sam. Hi. Thank you, Sam. Hi. Thank yep. you, Sam. Nay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, congratulations to you. Um, okay, uh, moving on, approving the schedule for regular meetings. It is enclosed in our packet, second Wednesday of each month. Well, still at six o'clock. We have moved it a half hour earlier for this year. Anyone have any concerns there? Need to suggest anything different? I okay. move to approve schedule for regular meetings second Wednesday of each month at 6 p.m. I second. Second by Sarah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay. Uh, assign member to sign official documents in absence of the chair right now or it was most recently the vice chair. Um, do, I need to, do we need to nominate someone? Yes, may no, I have no, a nomination? Or, so, or someone can just say there's no election on that one, right? It doesn't say election. We always vote on it. We do, okay. I'll move to assign um, Chelsea to sign official documents in absence of the chair. I second. Seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Um, the RTCC reps, currently Megan and Sarah. I am definitely needing to pull back from that because it, it we meet too early and I can't commit can to that. It. I would like to stay on that board. Excellent. If you'll have me. <laughs> Are there other nominations? We, I don't know if we're required to have two or we just prefer to have two. I so nominate I, Sam um, to join that board. I'm, I'm already at that meeting, so Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, to all those in favor of appointing Sarah and Sam, RTCC reps, aye, say aye. 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 Who can I put to make the motion and second it? Oh, oh. I'll so move. I move. Okay. Gotcha. I'll second. Megan. Megan, thanks. And that was unanimous. Uh, the teacher contract negotiating committee, currently Chelsea, Megan, and myself. Um, Chelsea, Megan, do you have interest in continuing on I it? I would like to stay on it. Stay on it. Especially since we're mid. Mid negotiation. Yeah. Chelsea, are you interested in staying on that committee? Yes, I will stay on that committee. Okay. As am I. Interested in staying on, but I have a motion. So moved. Second. Cotton and Sarah. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Support staff contract negotiation committee. Currently, Anne, Sarah, and Katya are uh, interested in continuing on that committee. I will continue. Okay, may I have a motion to keep the that committee I members? I move to keep the same committee for the support staff negotiations. Can I have a second? second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Excellent. A review of board expectations, rules, and orientation. Um, Okay, so everyone has their binder, right? Uh, just uh, this evening was going over, uh, and it was just put together this year, and I am very grateful for it. Um,
Sam, you have one as well, right? I, I have one. You, you, somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's just really important that all of us make a commitment in this first month to read through it, um, come up with any questions. I, I will say, um, The, the biggest things being, you know, I printed something out that really spoke to me from the VSBA. So I'm going to say this. Um, unity of purpose, which really spoke to me. So disagreements are going to happen, but if I could just quote, unity of purpose is a common focus, superordinate goals and core values and beliefs governance team members share in common about children, the school, and education. Unity of purpose helps them transcend their differences to fulfill a greater purpose. Um, it spoke to me in terms of acting as one voice, which I have learned um, is one of the biggest things uh, that we can do. We're all individuals, but we're acting as one for the, for the betterment. I'd ask that we all review really carefully and with focus the ends. Um, and if we want to revisit them, we've talked about it a lot in the past year. Um, perhaps revisiting and expanding, uh, further focusing, further uh, uh, narrowing down. So review as much as you can. Um, please go to vtvsba.org. They have really good toolkits. Um, I found a training I'm interested in doing. Please go to your own, or if it's worth it, tell the group, and perhaps we can all get on together and do trainings, um, and like Ann did, I'll try to send out ones that look particularly good um, or that I've done that I'll pass along. Anyone else want to contribute to uh, what they think is important on this first meeting of this new year about expectations, rules, or orientation? I would just say everybody should have, their book looks different than mine, but everyone should have one of these getting started with policy governance, especially for new, new board members. Um, and then the other thing is, is we do have, as a board, we do have money set aside for education. So um, I just recommend that people get up to speed. The BSBA has great stuff, but until we change our policies, we're, we're working under policy governance, and it is a system that sort of works as an entirety, and if you don't understand how it functions, it makes it hard to understand what your role is and what you need to do as a board member. So I would strongly encourage you to take a look at that book. Thank you. Anyone else? Before we move on. Excellent. Ownership Linkage Committee report slash plan. Um, this is for Heather and or committee members. I'm going to hand it over to Heather. Great. Thank you so much. Um, yes, I'm excited to report to the board um, that on March 3rd and March 9th, um, we had two uh, launch retreats. These were four hour sessions from 8 a.m. to noon. Um, there were gatherings of about 30 stakeholders, um, about half of them students, uh, also parents, teachers, um, and administrators. Uh, we had board members present um, at the March 9th, which was wonderful. And um, these launch events are leading toward a data collection. So what we have, where we've gotten so far is we have drafted a survey to send out to the community. We've drafted a plan to do a postcard campaign for people who like a QR code wouldn't be an accessible way to access a survey, a postcard would be better. And uh, also are planning a community dinner for Tuesday, April 4th to invite the community in. And the goal of all this data collection is to get people to inform us what skills, attributes, experiences, abilities do you want a graduate to have? And um, we're getting started on launching that data collection. Um, and this is a student-led data collection. So while we're facilitating and helping them, they're the leaders on this. So uh, we're touching, this is through 
the facilitation is through Up for Learning, and they've been wonderful, really wonderful. Um, we are reconvening that group um, hold on, for a data analysis on uh, April 18th, and so it will be a little bit more than a month of collecting information from the community. Uh, we have plans to go out to senior living facilities, the library, um, and other locations of the community to make it easy for people to, you know, share, share their thinking. So that's where we are. Um, Anne was present. Do you have anything additional to share? Uh, no, that that covers that part. We are also. I don't know if you want to talk about. Um, there's also a plan to create a survey for um, yes. folks who have left the district to help us gather feedback in terms of uh, what, you know, is it the ends we're going toward that isn't, you know, to try and figure out what might be causing people to decide they don't want their children in our district. Right, so our director of technology was able to pull a list of families um, who have students who have left the district um, over the past three years, or was it four? I think it was three years, so that we can ask them, you know, what was your reason? Did you move or whatever other reasons it may have been to inform <laughs> our outreach, right? Yeah, it can, I think it kind of came about of like the idea of, of like an exit interview in a, in a, to kind of inform some of the reasons. Are there, are there any themes that are coming up that maybe we need to address in our ends? Um, or is it just, you know, reasons of families moving and um, relocating and things like that and it's not actually an impact um, on what's actually happening so just to get an idea of, of why just to see if it can inform any work that we do our next meeting is the 22nd next Wednesday right next Wednesday right yeah. okay. for the subcommittee yes is that the one the one the, I think it's March 22nd. Yeah. Okay, let me call that. Yeah. Okay. The reconvening meeting is when? Hold on. Let, <coughs> um, the one that was going to be last night. But then yes, we yeah. shipped it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I realized okay, today. I, I thought we were just canceling that one and the next one was April 19th. Would you like to add one? Oh, no, I would love to do that. Okay, April 19th will be the next one. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, That's I fine. that one in my account. And four minutes. Excellent. So that's the next ownership linkage subcommittee meeting. Okay. And that's at 5 p.m. in the RUHS Media Center or online. Awesome. I didn't put it in my calendar and I wanted to verify. Maybe that's why? Because we can't. Okay. Can you just give us the dates for any of the other public ones that are coming up? For the portrait of a graduate meetings that are for the team? Team. For uh, board members to potentially attend? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The next one is April 18th, and that will be held at the RUHS Media Center. That's from 8 a.m. Uh, to 1230. And we'll be doing a data analysis looking at all the information we get from our community. And from there, moving forward toward drafting some possible portrait of graduates to show to the community. And our final retreat will be on May 2nd. Um, again, from 8 a.m. to 12.30. I do not have a final location set for that one. And then you mentioned the community dinner. Do we have a date for that? Yes, the community dinner is going to be on Tuesday, April 4th, starting at 5.30 at the um, RUHS cafeteria. I'll be sending out information on that to the community publicly through our principal's newsletters, um, front porch forum, and um, other efforts. We have a poster and a video. Lance Madsey is working on making a nice video. Um, so we're hopeful for a good turnout. What, what and location and time is that? That's going to be at the Randolph Union High School. Are you at what time? Uh, starting at 5.30, but it will be ongoing, you know, um, until 7.30. And are you doing RSVP? I know you had talked about it, but uh, are you going to try to do just drop it? The, yeah. Here's my thinking on that. I don't think we'll get a realistic number. I think what, 
I might ask for people to let us know if you're coming, but the door will be open. Okay. And I think people will know that. So Sarah will probably over prepare. Okay. Oh yes. I don't know. Or do you want to not RSVP <laughs> at all? Do you think that that? No, would... I'm just I'm just joking about Sarah. Over yeah, yeah. She does. She's um, she'll have a delicious spread. No, I just you had mentioned it, so I didn't know. And I yeah. think to put it out there to give maybe an idea. Yeah, um, yeah. Especially if it seems like it's really small, maybe more getting it out there. Yeah. You'd know yeah. to do, but to make it clear wherever you ask for RSVPs that they're not required. That's yeah, what I'll do. To attend. Perfect. In order to attend. Thank you. Anything else for committee members? That's it. Uh, okay, moving on to monitoring. Wow, it's 6.34. That's exciting. We are on time. How about that? Uh, the district equity policy monitoring update. Great. Um, I see Sierra Bond is online. I'd like to introduce uh, Sierra. Sierra is RUHS 11th grade student. Uh, she's engaging in an independent learning opportunity, which we call ILOs, um, to connect. It's going to be connecting to promoting equity and collecting student voice to guide equity work at RUHS. And she has a vision for informing the board's equity policy. Go ahead, Sierra, introduce yourself and tell us your vision. And then um, just trying to maybe find some other ways to get students who are not normally involved in this type of work to kind of put their input because I really want to get as much student input as possible. Because um, I feel like, personally, I think um, students having input on a policy that will directly affect them so much um, is really important. So I want to be able to sort of be the vessel for that student voice and then come up with a way to make sure that this equity policy that we now have in place um, is effective and continues to be effective. Um, so that's sort of my idea that I'm working on. Great. Thank you, Sierra. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So I don't know if you have any questions for me or anything about. So we had discussed that you might come up with a few different measures to put in front of the superintendent um, that could possibly be used in the equity report. Um, have you made any progress on identifying possible measures or collecting data? Um, not yet. Currently, I'm working on organizing like um, the ways to like organizing like student groups or like student, like, student meetings, so I can start getting some feedback. Because um, unfortunately, I was out for a little while. Um, so that's my that's what I'm currently doing. Um, but then I'll start compiling a list. Yes. Okay. So just let us, you know, continue to touch base with me on how I can support you in your work. Uh, any other questions for her? Okay, we have no no further questions, Sierra. We're excited about your voice and your help on bringing us more information about student voice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Impressive. Thank you, Sierra. Thank you, Heather. Um, okay, moving on. The quarterly facilities monitoring report. Um, Lane? No, uh, that's in the, the board packet. Uh, yep. They do have to correct the date on there. Um, they do have the wrong date, but it is the updated report. Probably the, the biggest things of note um, are at the very top. Uh, the locker room privacy stalls have been in place and in use for a while. I think they've finished the painting at this point in time, um, and that's for both locker rooms. 
Um, we've decided on that dangerous little area that goes off to the side of the high school. Um, that instead of closing it down, um, especially given we had a couple of trees down this year um, during the snowstorms um, that blocked the main road out there, people needed to use that uh, to get around those blockages. Then we were going to put in speed bumps. Uh, we do have them right now. Um, they just have to be installed. Um, and at least that will slow people down that are coming around that, that corner that's potentially dangerous. Do those speed bumps come out? Uh, they can stay in the whole time. Good question. I'll, I'll ask it. Um, I don't know. Yeah. That's not a true question. That's not a true question. The heat system failure uh, came in at uh, 225,000. We talked a little bit about this at the last board meeting, but there are a couple of other pieces that, that go along with this. Um, at the same time that the heat failed, the pipes. Uh, the aged pipes and the salt encroachment and everything else that was going on with them, that boiler also heats the domestic hot water for them. And so when, when they were down there, those pipes run parallel to the, the heat supply pipes, and they were in pretty bad condition. So we figured since we did all the work and paid all the money to rip everything up, this is the time. Let's just get them in place, and then we don't have to worry about a failure in the future at any point in time. Uh, so that work is happening. Uh, there will be a little bit of a cost to, to repave over Um, there was a grant that was put in uh, for some kitchen equipment, um, and you are going to see in the board packet a little bit later on, there are some requests for reserve funds, um, and one of them has to do with that. Um, there needs to be some electrical upgrades if the, the uh, grant does not cover. Um, so it will be a request, request for that. Uh, da, da, da. Ah, the big one that we're talking about to try to get it done this summer. Um, is the field house uh, the high school. Um, we had talked maybe a year and a half or so ago uh, that there was some water encroachment. The water is literally filtering upwards through the concrete uh, subfloor underneath the field house. Um, it's been causing some swelling in some of the boards to start to, to come free. Um, we did have somebody come in and do some core samples on it to, to give us uh, the best idea of the work that needed to be done. It does need to be replaced. Um, the other factor that, that came up when they did those core samples is between that concrete floor and between the wood that's on top, uh, that there is padding material that you know was in place you know, 50 years ago when it was originally built but is now fully degraded. Um, so it, it is time uh, to do that repair. So we're going to try to get that in place for this summer. Uh, there will be a reserve request for that once we have a final um, estimate on it. Which going to be in about the $300,000 range. Um, it might be slightly less than that uh, because we've been having a discussion about whether or not we should replace the gym bleachers at the same time. Uh, they're not in bad shape. They're actually um, aesthetically quite nice. Um, the problem is, is that when they're closed, uh, the kids have been sitting on them. So I've been working with the folks to make sure the kids aren't sitting on them when they're closed because it damages their structure. And we've got an engineer coming in to take a look at them to see if we can just repair them or if they should be replaced. So it could be $100,000 less depending upon what the decision comes back with the features. Uh, the pre-K fencing pieces that are there, that's uh, required as part of the regs, so we're going to try to get that into place. Um, and then you are going to see another uh, reserve request tonight um, having to do with the OSSD central office. Um, some of it is to do the outside painting, uh, to get the outside up to speed so we don't have the wood rot around the windows and, and all the other nonsense that we've been dealing with. But when they did the, the main work in the building, um, and the engineers came in and they started pulling some of the sheetrock down and removing uh, the ceilings to get to the electrical, um, the building was sagging on both the top floor and on the bottom floor enough that if there was a concern that could be a structural. Um, so we had to do some pretty significant work, bring in some uh, pretty hefty support beams. They're actually kind of cool if you get a chance to go and see them. Um, so that added significantly to the cost. Uh, but again, the, the, the building is uh, structurally sound at this point in time. Uh, but by the time the work is done, you will have a prime piece of, of property that, you know, if someday we're able to build a, a new complex for the high school tech center, you know, we can move 
new central office over there and either sell it or we could rent it out for office space. So it's been upgraded. And again, one of the things under the executive limitations report is, is, is maintaining and taking care of assets. So other than that, I'm not sure if there are other questions about the beyond that. Those are the big biggies that are happening in the account. Uh, quick one for me is on the heating system, and yeah. I appreciate the decision to proactively replace the domestic hot water pipes. Um, is there a mitigation plan to prevent salting because we're going to repave? They 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 use stainless steel instead of steel this time, which is going to help. Um, the materials that are packed around them um, have been upgraded to what they should be. That was one of the failures in the previous is the materials were quite correct uh, to try to, to, to solve that. I mean, this should be, this should outlast all of us. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I like about Bob and Wes is, uh, you know, they tend to be a little bit more expensive when they do the work, but, but that's what we all say. It's like, we, we want it done so it's not Question. Any other questions? Thank you, Lane. Um, okay, we have a second review and approval of the uh, executive limitation reports uh, included in the agenda. EL 2.3, financial conditions and activities. EL 2.6, asset protection. And I did correct the word, uh, the road versus Rouge. Oh. <laughs> I, had, I, I changed it and I had to look at it six times because it was still swimming before my eyes. <laughs> Try this time. Is there any uh, questions, discussions? Lane, do you want to uh, clarify anything? Or? Yeah, 2.3 two, 2. just in general. Um, that's the financial conditions and activities. What it's designed to do is it's making sure that we're using the monies within the district for its intended purposes. You know, and you're seeing a little bit of some of that tonight with how we're doing the requests of the reserve funds. Uh, when you get those reserve funds requests, um, since I've been here, you've also get the estimates and outlines from the, uh, the contractors. Um, making sure that we're paying our bills on time and that we're collecting the monies that are owed to us in time and fashion. Um, in terms of 2.6, which is the asset protection, that's pretty much as the name implies. It's about making sure that um, not just the district finances, uh, the monies are protected, but also the facilities and, and the equipment is, is protected with insurance and making sure that we're maintaining it uh, so that we don't have bigger problems in the future. I do have a comment on 2.6. Provision 5. On that first page, it states, you know, in the ITAC section, um, it'd be over, up over $15,000, but then on the, when you actually go to that provision five. Oh, it was, we updated it's up it over 40, right. It should be it's, 40. It's, the board voted on that last year. So that needs to get. Um, so where, where did you see the 15? So on this first page, Lane, for the, for oh, the in the, in the, over in the board reel, that's what. That was yeah. a change at the state level yeah. also. I've got to make sure that it's changed in your policy governance man man manual too, because that's where this is going to be. So it's a good catch. But no, it is it is forty thousand. That changed last year. Changed the grant it, I was voting on last year, yeah. Yeah. So the, so the So will we not be able to accept this one today then, if that change needs to be made, or can we accept it with that and then? You can accept it with, with that provisionally. Provisionally. That change.
abstentions? Great. Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, our own self-monitoring. Uh, we were asked to look at Board Governance Policy 4.0, which was enclosed. Uh, I'll just go ahead and read the policy warning. This is policy number 4.0, Global Governance Commitment. The purpose of the board on behalf of Braintree, Brookfield, and Randolph is to see to it the Orange Southwest School District A achieves appropriate results for students at an appropriate cost as specified in board and its policies, and B avoids unacceptable actions and situations as prohibited in board executive limitations policies. Did anyone use the ratings of always, most of the time, some of the time, never? I said for the first for the first part, I said most of the time, always, okay. because we're still waiting on a full ends report. But that's because the state hasn't released the testing data yet. I, I want you guys to do me a favor. I got to find a more gender neutral way to say. Um, let's set a date um, where if we have not heard from them, I will update it using what the committees are developing this year in the, in the different areas, like the Social Studies Department and Math Department. Um, it may not be perfect, but at least it will be baseline data. We may not have much to compare it to. But that's the, since that's the, what we're moving towards anyway um, in future years, and then we do have data with our own internal systems, some of which they are using. They're going to be the ones stating, you know, they've created their own kind of interpretation of the ends. They've identified the data that they want to use and monitor. They've identified what the thresholds are that mean success or growth. Um, and so I would say by our June meeting, uh, we do an end report regardless of what happens with the and that's for last year, because we still don't have right. last year's state data. And then you would get another one in uh, October-ish. Uh, that would be about this year. That way it doesn't go by. And it'd be good to just get it right, vote it in. Let's get it right on your uh, your annual agenda um, for this time, just so that we know it's there. Right before. They've done a lot of good work. Okay. So maybe for the agenda for next meeting, that would be an item to vote to add it to the annual. I also said, uh, I said most of the time because I was saying the board is checking, is in the process of checking through uh, the portrait of a graduate process that our ends are still in line with what our owners, stakeholders feel are the appropriate ends. So that's why I said most of the time. Yeah, that was we're, we're in process with some of that. Would people agree with Anne's assessment? Yes. Any other discussion? People feel we're doing pretty well with this one, yes. We start. Still too new. I don't even have any data from a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think based on our current situation. And policy. Yeah. And the subcommittees we've been placed. Yeah. decisions. These are uh, a few first readings, so we won't be voting tonight. We'll have a second reading next, next month. Um, let's start with the selection of library materials. This 
content comes directly from the Vermont School Board Association recommended policies as written by the state. Okay, thank you. Thank I was you just going to stop. Yep. No only, creative writing was involved. Okay. The, on only, my part. the only thing to be, to be cognizant of uh, with both of them is both of them spell out both staffing and material requirements that if it is voted in the policy, we will have to make sure through the budget process that we fund. Um, and most of those pieces are already in place, 99% of what is in here are already So I don't think it's, it's not going to happen here. And these are recommended policies, not required, so they could be edited. Okay. Did anything jump out at anyone in their first reading? It's requiring a library media specialist for every 300 students. We are well in excess of that at this time. We've been slowly building up uh, the time through the budget process and the librarians at the two small schools, which was used to be one day, there'll be three days a week now. I'm slowly over time, if we can afford to try to get them up in full time, uh, you know, for supporting that, that creative thinking and, and trying to allow proper planning time for the elementary teachers. This is one of the best ways to do it. Doing your digital literacy work and all the other pieces that we've been working on, um, the teachers are going to have to, to make. Would the language uh, in regards to those numbers need to change? Is it the library specialist or can it stay on this? Yeah, we are currently well in excess of what this policy is asking for. Oh, 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 sorry. Right. Thinking backwards. Yes. But if we yes. Are, it. <laughs> so we have approximately the district 500 elementary okay. students total, and we have uh, three librarians employed. Okay. So we're doing great. I'm thinking. Yeah, 2.2. <laughs> 2. 2. 2. So oh, so. oh, if you do the FTE, thank you. Yeah, so, so we're in good shape. Yeah, and the only reason that I'm bringing up the monetary piece is because it's not an issue going forward, but let's say that we, you know, the, the finances horribly wrong and we get a five year stretch where they're mad and they have to make cuts. When we do have policies that require a financial outlay, we still have to fund things. Yeah. So just to, just to have <coughs> I am in full support of both of those policies. So we have, for example, two point two FTE for our media specialist for our five year students. We could go down with this policy in place and down to one point five. 1.4 and still be compliant. Um, not that I want that to happen, just for the record. I, the most important part of this policy is protecting our students' First Amendment rights to access information and read freely. That's what is the critical part. And then in the superintendent's interpretation, when Heather and I will sit down and work on it because there's procedures, you know, for examining to see if materials are appropriate. Um, most of it will tie it directly to, you know, if it doesn't tie somehow um, directly or indirectly to the state grant. It's got to some of very, very safe grounds, very safe footings. Plus, uh, we'll also make sure that it's tying into our equity policy and then uh, the equity requirements in the state. As it comes. But we've got some development to do to figure those pieces out. Materials. Yeah, um, they both. They both. The, the, the story is the same for both. Okay. Yeah, yeah they're very Great. similar. Um, and uh, when it comes to protecting access to materials, one is for the media center and one is for instructional materials. Um, Lane, does the Instructional materials require staffing at any ratio? I don't believe it does. I don't, that one, no. That one does not. But there are material requirements. Right, and access to the library on a regular basis and technology resources.
Um, also considering the addition to EL policy 2.0. So 2.0 was the, it's an executive limitation. Um, it is the global constraints policy. Um, and basically the only change um, that was recommended was just adding another qualifier in there. You know, the superintendent shall not cause or allow any practice activity, decision, or organizational circumstance that is unlawful, uh, safe, and prudent. Or, and then we added the word inequitable. Or in violation of commonly accepted educational and professional ethics and practices. Technically, the inequitable is covered under um, that last line there, violation of commonly accepted educational and professional ethics and practices. But I think it's important that we put that in there to show our commitment to tie into the equity policy um, that was voted in and to the equity So we will revisit all three of those next month. Uh, moving on, Lane, legislative update. You're keeping me busy. Yes, so we I actually, am. <laughs> we, we, had a, um, we had a good meeting, uh, the all members meeting with the superintendents um, today. And we, we usually hold it up at Capitol Plaza. That way the legislators can come over when they have a break and come and talk to us. So um, outside of the, the key pieces of legislation that looks like the ones that they're going to focus on that I put in the superintendent's report. Um, they had a couple of uh, a pretty interesting updates. Um, they talked about the, the PCB testing and the fact that, you know, if you get a hit on the PCBs, there's an immediate response that's required by the district. It immediately has to be renovated. The work has to be done to get those PCBs out of there. Um, they recognize that it's an unfunded mandate because they have not supplied a lot of money to actually be able to do that remediation work. So what they're suggesting at this point in time is putting a pause on that immediate effect and trying to find a way to combine any kind of remediation work that might has, have to happen with their plans to reenact construction aid. Because they also had this other project that they were working on was examining all the school buildings around the state to see what shape they were in and try to decide if they should be putting funding aside to help districts rebuild and renovate. And so it kind of makes sense. You know, you wouldn't want to have an immediate effect from PCBs where you got to go spend, you know, $2 million remediating stuff when you're just going to rip the school down in, in three years and replace it. And so they're trying to find a way to combine those two. And it, it sounds like they're pretty serious about that, which is good. Um, after the, they call it the swatting incident, but the hoax that affected the 21 schools, RUHS being one of them, where uh, folks called in anonymously and basically said, you know, there is an active school shooter in each of these buildings right now, it's happening. Um, they've had a refocus in the direction of the, the governor on um, getting in the, the more specific regulations about what schools have to have for safety processes and schools and so they're doing a lot of work on that. Um, interestingly enough, most of what they seem to be putting into that legislation are things that we've already been. Um, the biggest kind of concerns at least that the Superintendents Association spoke about um, as, as well as the NEA folks that were there um, on the periphery talking today as well um, is the idea that they had set up a variety of within the law of uh, task groups to do work within buildings, and they were very prescriptive about who had to be on them, um, overly prescriptive. Um, because in a low-level incident, we don't need 50 people to come in and, and try to decide what's going on. We might need five, five or six. And so there's some discussion around that. Um, well, I think those, those were the two biggies. Um, independent schools? Uh, the independent school piece, that, that conversation continues. So that was the, the Carson versus Macon decision um, about using uh, public funding uh, to go to religious schools. Um, the biggest concern there that was discussed today and was brought to the legislature, the very, very nice gentleman that came in, I wish you could remember his name, is the idea that Public schools have a variety of things that they have to do. Um, teachers have to be certified. We have to store at certain points. 
on state testing uh, for federal government purposes. There are certain policies like anti-discrimination policies that we have to have enacted um, to be able to receive um, federal funding and sometimes funding from the, the, the state itself. All those things fall under this category of protections. These are We put these in place and we make people hop through these hoops um, because we're trying to protect kids and make sure that there's a quality education. And so the biggest concern about the person we make a decision is just that idea. The private schools don't have to do any of that. So either these protections that you were laying on public schools, if they truly are important, the private schools should have to step up and live up to them as well because we're protecting kids and protecting taxpayers' money by making sure they're getting a quality education. Or you need to say that these protections really aren't doing anything so nobody should you know, have, to, have to go through these hoops. Um, so obviously their intent is uh, they've got two path, pathways that they're pursuing. Um, one of them is the idea that, okay, we're just not going to give money to private schools anymore, you know, problem solved. Um, or the other pathway is, okay, we'll continue to give money to private schools, and here are the 50 things that public schools are doing um, and conditions that they have to meet uh, to receive public funding. The private schools who want public funding are going to have to do that too. So that's kind of what it uh, at this point in time. It's not clear where it's going to land. My impression was based on the discussion is they are looking on putting the same requirements on private schools to receive that. The only other topic that was covered was workforce development, and that is in a growth stage. They, they don't even have the full plan flushed out yet. Yeah, and I, but I looking actually, to create more diversity and more of a pool of applicants. Yeah, because for us, that's been one of the discussions. It hasn't affected us much, so I, I kind of toned down a little bit. I got to admit, um, at that point in time. But one of the biggest issues is that during COVID and the exodus from the teaching ranks. Um, we have good people that are coming in and, and applying in lots of the districts around the state, but the problem is they're not certified, so they don't meet that quality requirement piece. And so they've been making lots of uh, bends in the rules and stuff to allow them to be able to teach recognized the shortage. Um, but again, you know, how do you get that workforce quality back up? If you really believe having that full certification is important, how do we manage this this issue that we're in while raising that?
we closed the complaint and adjourned the meeting. The board members then remained to hear the comments of the public that were present. Is there a motion to ratify the March 8th meeting? I move to ratify the March 8th meeting. I second. Great. Uh, all those in favor of ratification? Aye. 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 Yep. Uh, opposed? Abstentions? Sarah and Megan. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. And the consent agenda. Um, does that make sense? Are people okay with that, splitting it by minutes? Funds requests? Um, um, yes, except that I want to abstain from the, the meeting minutes from three, et I don't want to abstain from all of them, but... Oh, yeah, I same. Know with the three, you can't approve those minutes. We, yeah, yeah, can't you just did that one. No, no we just, we just ratified, moved to uh, ratify it, it not approve So we could... Uh, I so. would move to approve minutes from the regular meeting on 2-8. Uh, oh, you know what? I was not out with that one either, so... Just kidding. I'm not going to move anything. I'm, I'll just abstain. <laughs> just abstain. Sorry. Sorry. I was trying to make it easy. All right. I'll move to approve minutes from regular meeting, budget informational, annual meeting, and a special meeting. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. And second. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Abstentions. Excellent. Thank you. Um, the, the RTCC carryover funds uh, for balance on purchase of vehicle. We should have read through these, of course. Are there questions? Are there specifics, Lane, that they you are want to talk um, about? Seeking to replace, they had a, they had a, I believe it was a pickup truck as well as a trailer um, that were kind of aging out, and so they are trading them in. Those two separate pieces. Um, for I don't even know what you call it, a, a larger truck that has a dump body that does the dump that'll do both things. Um, and so this this is a, a, an appropriate purchase. The uh, the equipment that they're trading it for is in, in pretty poor shape. And that's to support support the, the tech program. And Felicia also got a grant to fund part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, the next is a just the attached equipment. This is the kitchen. Yeah, we kind of touched on that. Yep. Um, the request in there, I believe, is for the electric door. Yes. We have those invoices. <laughs> Central office renovations, you touched on that. Yep. Emergency construction aid application. Okay. They have reprobate reports. Yeah, what is that? <coughs> I don't see that. See, I don't see that in your green folder. Oh, that's a, um, there is a scholarship, if I remember this uh, correctly. There is a scholarship that um, after the donors had passed away, the probate court monitors. And so us signing it is just saying, yeah, yeah we're okay with that monitor. Uh, the administrator's contract. Uh, before we approve it, we have Nika. Great, yeah. If, uh, if Nika is still present, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Nika Oates, recommended for director at RTCC. Uh, she has 15 years of teaching and school leadership experience. Um, she's been a CTE school counselor and a work based learning coordinator. And she's coming to us from the Claremont School District where she is currently an assistant principal and also director of adult ed at their technical center. And she's here. Could you say hello and introduce yourself, Nika? Hi. Yes, thank you. That was perfect. Yes, so I'm Nika Oaks. I'm so, so excited to be part of the team. Um, it's been absolutely an amazing um, journey so far. So I can't wait to join you guys full time. 
Thank you. It's great to meet you. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you. All right, do I, can I have a, a motion to approve, let's see, the uh, so moved. funds request, <coughs> Bay Foundry, and okay. the administrator's contract. Thank you. So Could I get a second? Second. <laughs> Seconded by Megan. This is the rest of okay. Who was the first? Copy of the leader. Gotcha. Megan seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Great. Unanimous. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks Deepa. Congrats, Deepa. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll be in touch really, really shortly. And thank you very much for being here. Excellent. All right, Lane, you're very much for inviting me. Thank you. Thanks, Nika. I know. Uh, superintendent's report. Anything you want to add, Lane? Um, if there's questions, we kind of updated the legislative portion of it just a little while ago. Yes. Yeah. Okay, questions? No? How about on the uh, other reports or financials? Financials, I mean, there was a note or two that I put down. So we would, you would expect as you're looking through this at this point in the year that we would have 33% of our budget left. And in most cases, we are well in excess of that. Um, there are one or two lines um, that are a little bit less than that. But in most cases, it's because we're waiting for reimbursement for grants. Um, the one piece that I'll point out, because I don't know why this was always the topic of discussion in the, in the early board meetings way back when, when I started, but that's on the revenue page. Um, part, of the, part of the way down the third table there, it starts off with transfer of funds, Title I. If you get down to food service, you'll see the balance of 72,942. Because this is a revenue, um, that means that we are still awaiting that money coming in. It's actually a deficit. That deficit is about what it normally is this, this time of the, the year. Um, it's typically in deficit by about 30000 at the end of the year. That's the normal um, place. And the reason that it's at 72000 is because we're just waiting for last month's receipts to come in. Um, I have a feeling that we will be in the black um, this year by the end. So uh, Sarah's been doing a really good job in good services for the agent. Any questions from board members? Great. Uh, Katya. Sure. <laughs> Planning I staff appreciation. Um, yeah, I didn't have anything to report on that. Um, yeah, I'm happy to work on that again this year if anyone wants to do it with me. It's pretty simple. Um, I guess just figuring out if we want to do what we've done last year, which is we did the gift cards last year, Linda, right? So last year we did gift cards um, to a variety of local businesses. And um, could employees pick which one they wanted or they just got one? Did we do a, could employees pick which which gift card they received or did I, they just when like? I doled them out, I just like. Oh, okay, perfect. If they needed 33, they got 11 of each. Perfect. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Great. So, um, I don't know what they did at the schools. So. <laughs> they, yeah, schools. if you, basically, we had a choice. Okay. But it was sort of first come, first serve, so. Yeah, get there quick. Get there while it's hot, you know. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I think if we're open to doing last year, we, we basically did um, local businesses. And we can do that again. I guess we can also decide if we want to do something in case somebody lives out of town and would prefer just to have like an Amazon gift card. We can do that too in addition. But I think the local gift cards were really great because it supports our community as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it seemed like those have been always really well received. Yeah. So typically, um, I'll just make some phone calls and see if, and we just basically say we're going to buy this amount of gift cards from you. And so I guess from Linda, I'll just need to know. I'll, we'll figure out how many businesses and then how many cards each will get. So. Okay. I think anyone wants to volunteer to help you. Yes, <laughs> we got it. I'll volunteer to help you if you, oh, if you thank want you. it. Um, thank you. And what's the budget for it? It's, what did we do? 10? It's 
was a ten dollar gift card? It was ten dollars, yeah. yeah. A gift card. Yeah. But, okay. uh, but yeah, how many gloves. how many <laughs> <laughs> how I many think students? about two hundred and seventy. I mean that's what we had last year. Yeah. I think it's close. Okay. Uh, I'll check. Great. Perfect. All right. I'll work on that. Thank you. Oh. Um, I may not be able to do the graphics this year, but if we okay. can't, maybe that's something that the students the students could do. Oh yeah. Graphics are really good. Yeah. Like an actual physical gift card. We did, yeah, last year we did like different graphics for the different um, organizations. And then, I think you sent it to me. Yeah, we might have the ones from last year still too, but I know there's some new businesses that we should probably support as well. Okay. Okay. When do we need that? So that's happening the week of May 8th. Um, when's my deadline? I need a deadline or else. What? <laughs> April 30th. April 30th? Okay, great. I can do that. She gave me a deadline? Sure. <laughs> Rachel gave me one. I'll stick to it. Appreciation refill is what, April 8th? May 8th. First week of May. Well, I got the 8th one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 There's stuff that I think the whole first week of May, if I'm not mistaken, like there's Lunch Hero Day and School Bus Day and all kinds of things. Yeah. 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 Yeah.